All right, we'll go ahead and uh, get things underway. It's nice to meet you all. My name's Brian Peck. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing here for Mazevo. Um, if this is your first Mazevo Connect, welcome. We do these every month. Um, and uh, this is just a way for us to kind of bring the Mazevo community together, share tips and best practices. Uh, we've got a lot of Mazevo customers here and also some non-customers as well. So welcome to everybody that's joining us here. Um, as far as just recent Mazevo updates, uh, you know, we wrapped up a, a really good 2022 for us here at Mazevo. Uh, we welcomed a lot of new customers on board last year, which was great to see. And uh, we actually, uh, we did a Mazevo Connect back in December. I think some of you were, were here for that. And we talked about our roadmap for 2023 as far as product enhancements and features and things like that. Um, if you didn't get a chance to check that out, we have that recorded. It's up on our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, if you can't find it, just send us an email. We'll be happy to direct you where that's at. But we we kind of went into depth on on what we're planning on working on and have already started on, on working on some of that stuff. Um, I wanted to just introduce you to some of the other Mazevo staff that is uh, joining me here on this call. I've got uh, Joe Finley, who is one of our Mazevo trainers joining, uh, also Wendy Newland, uh, and uh, she's also a Mazevo trainer. Many of you know Joe and Wendy if, if you've uh, worked with them on your implementations here. Uh, also joined by Claire DeGroat. She helps me on the sales team. And uh, finally, Dean Evans, our CEO. So um, Hi, everybody. anyways, that's our, our cast of characters here. Um, I wanted to kind of lay some ground rules before I introduce our speaker today. Um, Everybody is on mute right now, so uh, you know if you need to say something, you can unmute yourself. But um, uh, we do encourage though participation um, in here. And uh, Rochelle, I didn't ask you before we started, but is there any way you prefer to have people ask questions? You want them to put them in the chat? Do you want to save ten minutes at the end? Do you care? I don't care, and okay. they can feel free to interrupt. <laughs> Probably okay. helpful to uh, just turn it on and say, hey, I have a question or something okay. like that. That would, that would, sometimes I miss the chat, so. Okay, no problem, no problem. So yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, again, we, we encourage you to be interactive if you do have questions and things like that for Rochelle here. And um, yeah, so anyways, uh, with that said, I would like to introduce our speaker today, uh, Rochelle Criswell. She uh, works at Boise State University where she's the assistant director of the student union up there. And she's going to be talking a little bit about their operation and how they've uh, they've been using Mazevo. So um, with that said, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to Rochelle and uh, let her take it away. Thanks, Brian. Um, I gonna, can, can I share my screen? I have a oh, yeah, I'll talk Maybe. a little bit about um, Boise State and what we do here. Okay, so um, I work for student union events here at Boise State. Um, I oversee, I've over been a part of the events team for about nine years now. Previous to that, I did work in the student union um, as a student at the information desk. And then I briefly went um, outside the university and worked for a nonprofit um, actually two nonprofits um, working in the event business there. Um, in all of my work, I've worked uh, with EMS and Cateries and now Mazevo. So Boise State University, our enrollment is about 24,000 students, 66% in state, 34% out of state. We have about 3,000 um, employees. There are about 15 event venues on campus. We manage um, three venues, as well as all the outdoor spaces. Um, we're in the process of building a department that is going to be university-wide, looking at how we work with all the different venues on campus and how we utilize Mazevo for that. So I'm just one piece in the big puzzle that is events at Boise State. Um, we were founded in 1932, and we are best known for our blue turf. This is the student union. So this is where myself and my team is housed out of. Um, this is our team. So we have two assistant directors and an AV manager. 
Um, I oversee the events team, which is the event coordination team, our sales and scheduling supervisor, and our guest su service su supervisor. We also have a team of about 10 student employees that work with us. And then we have our operations team, which has an assistant director, two managers, um, and about 12 full-time staff members and close to 40 uh, student um, employees. And then we have an AV team who has a manager, two coordinators, and about 10 staff members. Our roles in the big scheme of things, um, we have the intake team that manages all of the books and reserves all the rooms. Um, they collect all the required documentation like contracts um, or 501c3 forms, any of the forms that we need them to fill out for the university. They then take that and move that over to the event coordination team. We have a team of about three event coordinators who do all of our events. Those event coordinators are working directly with our clients to build the event reservations in Mazevo. So adding all the service components, um, you know, putting in all the notes. And then between that, we have production meetings and client meetings and where we use approvals, Mazevo approvals in there to communicate between our teams um, to kind of the execution team, which is the ops team and the AV team and our event management team who are on the floor executing the events. Um, after the event takes place, they tear down. We have we use automatic emails to send out to clients. Um, and then our intake team kind of completes the circle and reaches back out for them to rebook. Um, the venues that we manage, so we manage the student union, which has about three ball or who has th we have three ballrooms. They are between 400 and 1400 in capacity. All three can be broken down into four separate ballrooms. And then we have five mid-size rooms and eight small rooms. We look, uh, in 2022, we did about 4,500 um, event bookings um, and then 875 major events, which we consider are any event larger than 200 people or have major university implications. And then we welcomed about 400,000 people in attendance at those events. In the Alumni and Friends Center, we have one ballroom. We have a living room, which is a very small room um, where the furniture doesn't move and it's really more for social gatherings, conference and a conference room. We did 155 bookings over there. 26 bookings were major events and we welcomed about uh, 9,000 people to the Alumni and Friends Center. And then we have Christ Chapel. It's a small little chapel. It was built in 1866 um, and was moved to our campus in the 70s. It's moved twice um, in its history. We did 10 bookings there um, and had 10 cu happy couples leave that, or we hope. And then we have um, outdoor uh, and deliveries. So we have we service the quad, which is a large outdoor area. Um, it's up here, uh, the photos on the right show the, the quad. So we use picnics. There's lots of student gatherings out there. We also have a patio where we do events. And then we also service um, the rest of the campus with deliveries. So tables, chairs to make uh, sure events happen, happen campus wide. Um, we did 706 of those type of bookings, uh, 59 of those were major, and we saw about 36,000 students and guests attend those. This is our breakdown of the events that we do. So uh, most of the events that we do are for the university. We're looking at about 3% of events that we're doing for outside or nonprofits. And then um, the event origins, so this is kind of for our intake team, this is where all of the events are coming from. So 62% of those people are coming from email, they're coming from phone, they're coming into our intake team to be booked into the system. The 24% is a conversion, so that's when we switch from EMS to Mazevo, that's what came over. Um, and then 13% is a requester, which is through the online request system. We want to beef up that number. So hopefully in a year, we're seeing more like 30% is coming in requester and a drop in that event planner. Um, we want to get our campus utilizing that piece. 
So before I dive into Mzevo and the intake piece, um, the things that we have done to make this requester more robust, I wanted to give you a little bit of a breakdown of how we categorize things, because this might be a little helpful as I navigate through security policies and such. So we have three different event types on our campus that um, we utilize. Um, it's a major event, which is any event that's greater in number and coordination effort than a service meeting. So this is anything that's over 200 people and is uh, going to have university implications is really how we define that. Service event is anything under 200 um, that requires the ser services to be scheduled like parking or catering, audiovisual. We need to set up and tear down the room. Um, and these requests um, have a, a deadline. So we have to book them 14 days out. For major events, we have to book them one month out. And then we have a standard event, which can happen in any of our smaller rooms. There, that's the rooms that our um, ops team does not have to go in and move around or change around, that they just have to um, maybe just check in and make sure the room is clean. But it's it's a rooms that we necessarily don't have to add service components to. And then our statuses, um, we utilize four statuses. Uh, web requested was, is which the web requested events come in as, and then we use requested. So that's kind of on our event planner side with, or event coordinator side. That is the group's requesting space and is kind of pending until we get their documentation in, contracts and such. Then we move it to pending services, which means that's when at the point it gets moved to one of our event coordinators to coordinate. Those pending services, um, that really is indicating to the client that while, yes, you have your room, you do not have all your services that are guaranteed. So AV, parking, catering, all those components need to be approved, need to be worked out and approved by those different vendors. And then the last and final one is approved. So that is when the entire event is ready to go. All the service partners, parking, AV, audiovisual are confirmed on the details, they say, yes, this is what we can execute, um, and it's ready for the on the floor team to make happen. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to Mazevo and walk through what um, it takes, what we, uh, our process was when we were building that web request. So um, to begin with, I am a global admin. So that is why you're seeing what <laughs> I can see in case some of you don't have that level of permission. So when we um, started to build those, we kind of first started with the security policies. Um, and we have two, we have one for departments and one for students. The reason being that we have some areas that departments can book um, that students cannot book. So we broke them out into those two different ones. So when a group logs in or um, signs into Mazeva for the first time, they are defaulted to departments and then our team goes in and I'll, I'll do this at the end here um, and switches them over to what security policy they need to belong to. So in this um, security policy, there are, are different security groups. We have four, which is relating to our um, event type, as well as one for outside, because there are some rules around outside that are a little bit different than the major service and standard. So we went in there and we built those for each of the groups. So as, you, as I had noted um, before, major events, they have to be booked um, quite a ways out. They can't just be booked um, you know, the week before, or the day before. So we built that in to ensure when someone's going into a web request that they are, um, that those, that hour and that, um, that's all set up for them, as well as the time frame in which they can book those events. Uh, and then all of ours come in as a request um, so that we have to go in and approve it. They are not just booked solid into the space. And then we have the statuses for booking. And then once we developed all of these, um, we set the different rooms. And as you can see, there are some rooms that we just don't book through online. Um, and then, then there's others that we are, and they're just the standard spaces. 
or their major event spaces. So those major event spaces are usually the ones like the full ballroom or they're the patio that's going to take a lot more to do. The quad spaces are our promotional spaces are all outside. So they're gonna fall into that security group. Um, but that is how we broke it down when we were building that those security groups. And then the next piece that we did was go in to the resources and determine what resources we were going to allow for our um, clients to book online. So you can go in here and click the ones and change from requestable yes to no. So you can make those changes. So some of those things, um, when we first started, we just had some really basic AV equipment, some very basic um, regular equipment like tables and chairs. Um, we did notice that there was a big learning curve that we felt like we needed to address before we opened everything up. So we scaled that back. And right now we don't allow anyone to add any resources, but we're hoping with just some campus education that we can get to that at some point. The next thing um, that we did was create event questions. So event questions, um, when the requester is filling out that request for space, these are some things that we built that they either always have to answer or it's based on organizational type. So um, are you planning to have catering at your event? Um, that's always asked. And as well as we, we do have a trigger question for that, that leads them to a link um, if they're going to be using our in-house catering or if they're going to bring, be, be bringing an external. And then we also um, have based on organizational type. So this is for um, our departments. Are they having, are they sponsoring a third party event? Uh, there's a form and a process that needs to take place at that. So. We have a similar question for our event court or for our students, but um, they have to go through a different process. So we're directing them in a different way. We also have um, some questions based on location. So for example, this is for our delivery locations. Do you need the event equipment set up um, because there's additional labor charges for that? So these have been really helpful in getting a full picture of what an event will look like when they're uh, when it goes through that event request process and not having to reach back out to ask those questions. So I'm going to go really quickly to an event so we can see that. So here are the anthropology department, they requested it online, and here are the questions. It just populates here. It's awesome because it has this number right at the top, so it tells our team instantly that they've answered the questions, or when it gets passed on to the event coordinator, who doesn't necessarily know that it came in online, they know immediately they can go into those event questions and get more details on that event. Um, so that's been very helpful for us. Um, I also wanted to tap into this messaging feature. We do a lot of messaging, sometimes with the uh, event, uh, the primary contact. Um, as we grow, as Mazeba grows on our campus, a lot more people are in it and actively using it. And so we can communicate with them. But we also um, communicate with each other on our team. So this is Jacob. Um, you know, coming in and prompting one of our students like, hey, we need to add some more equipment. We also will go back and forth on, hey, we, you know, this this event has got the contract, but we're still waiting on a deposit. Um, we, we work with our finance team through this so that we can go back and forth and understand who's put deposits on and who's not. So it's been a really great tool for us to use. So we're communicating in Mazevo and there is a history rather than doing it in a separate location like your email. Um, we really in the beginning, um, when we switched to Mazevo um, in 2001, what was very important to me was when setting up this process, I wanted to ensure that people were actually using Mazevo and that we weren't setting up all this and doing all this work in for creating a web request um, process when no one would use it. So we really did a lot of outreach to our campus to ensure that everyone was getting on board um, and really explaining the perks of why Mazevo as the um, event planner coming in and requesting this place, why it's really powerful. So we talked a lot about being able to log in, see all your current events, where they're at, 
all the equipment that's on it, and then also having a history. So saying, you know, you do an annual event, you can click back and see that annual event for several years. And that way you have right there, like what you did and what you didn't, you can work with your event coordinator to put in notes because you can say, these are the five things we do different. Um, and it's right there. It's all living in one system. And it, um, you can communicate with your event coordinator, whether they're brand new, because that history is living with it. Um, so we created this website, which is Mazebo 101. Um, it runs through how you request services in space. Um, we have a video for that as well um, as like some helpful hints on how to read your Mazevo confirmations when you receive them. Um, so we took this, we put it in all of our emails, and then our intake team did a really great job of identifying events that would be very easy for groups to go in and put in themselves. They would say, hey, we've confirmed this, but next time, hey, try doing this in Mazevo. And um, the growth we've seen really in the last six months um, as people have began to do more events and we've come out of um, COVID, it's been exponential. And I'm, I'm constantly adding new users um, in our dashboard, usually you know, 10 to 15 a day. So it's been a big, um, it, it's been very useful for our campus. So um, the first thing I do in the morning when I get um, on, onto it, it pops um, me in at the day of the glance and I see the new users. So this is how I go in um, or any of my team can go in and change or update this. So um, it's easy here on campus because I can quickly determine who's a student and who's not um, by the U dot. So these two people are departments, they're good to go. I marked them as reviewed. And then I come in here and I change the security plan to students for this person. And then I marked them as reviewed. So that's just a daily task that we do. And if you're looking to make that, so it's somebody, you know, someone's specific role to do that, it's really easy to give them access. Um, you can go in and open up here. And in the security roles, it's the user configuration. Where is it? Oh, right here, I'm sorry, user configuration. So you just check this and this is gives them the ability to go in and change those security plans on there. So um, for our intake team, now that we're bringing in all of these web requested events, the easiest way for them to find them, um, they have been going into find events. They go to advanced. And then they're going ahead and they're doing um, typically 90 days out. And status. And we're searching for our web requested status. So my team did a really great job. Go team, they, we have none in here that we need to process, but it is something that we're doing daily to go in and process those web requests as they come in. Um, our heaviest users uh, typically that we're seeing are students and then also um, anyone who's booking, you know, your meetings for your department, um, some of those smaller events, those are what we're seeing coming in daily. Um, so once this web it's put in and um, it's been moved from web requested to pending services, um, the intake team at that point is really doing their due diligence to check our event books just to make sure this event can move forward, it's good to go. Once they feel really strongly about that, they're gonna move it to an event coordinator. So I'm gonna go pull up another reservation. So we then again use the messaging feature to switch this over to an event coordinator. So um, Jacob on our team would just reach out and say, hey, you know, we see right here um, our intake team, the, the facility use agreement was um, filled out and uploaded. And then we're giving it and passing it along to an event coordinator to fill out. Um, they're going ahead and, you know, chatting with the different event planners um, and making sure that um, they get all the details planned for it. Um, the next piece is our approvals. So we do two, um, we use two, three approval systems. 
Um, one is for our audio for, uh, visual service team to review. Um, that's when our team gets in if there are staff that needs to um, be uh, scheduled for this or complex AV setups that need to be reviewed. Um, they enter in all that equipment and then it flags our AV manager, uh, Andy, and Andy goes in, reviews it, and then approves that piece. We also have a parking approval. So we input our parking. Parking will look at it. We have parking is a very finite resource on our campus. And so they're looking at it um, not only from per event, but also the big picture of, okay, what's going on on campus? We have an event here in the student union, but we also have a basketball game in our arena. We have a, a Broadway show going in our Morrison Center, our, our large theater. So how do we navigate parking on campus? So there's kind of different levels to the way our parking looks through Mazebo and through that lens to understand what each day and each parking situation is going to bring. The other piece that we use our approvals for is our event management. For all of our large events, we have an event manager on the floor for those. So when our event coordinator feels like it's necessary, they're going to go ahead and add that resource, um, event management, into the resources, which then flags our um, event services uh, supervisor who schedules a um, assistant event manager to be on the floor for that. They then um, will approve it and that flags the event coordinator that those that that is ready to go and there's someone scheduled and assigned to that. All of that um, we built here in the approvals. And so the event coordination piece is set up um, it's a it, the, the approval trigger is set up through the service and it's our event management and then myself, Kat and Jacob are all the ones that are getting those notifications um, and are the ones to go in and, and make those approvals happen. You can do triggers on a lot of different things. For a while, we were in the process of switching our venue from uh, we used to manage the Stickle Sky Center and we moved that back to the athletics team. So we had a approval process in here that was set on location um, for the Stickle Sky Center to ensure that anything that came in through our office was also being approved by the athletics team to say, yes, we can do this in the future. That was um, after the transition would happen. So we've used these in a variety of different ways and it's been really powerful and impactful to our team. The last piece um, I wanted to just cover that we do and utilize quite a bit in Mazevo is our scheduled emails. So back to um, our different event types, we have um, split some of those event emails to go out when really important deadlines are due. So for our major events, all of the details have to be in at four, 14 days prior to the event. So we have an uh, email going out 18 days prior to the event that says review needed. So they're getting that, they're looking at it, taking a minute to review, is there anything outstanding um, to ensure that they are also looking over things and reviewing things and getting back with their event coordinators. We also have that for service and we have that for standard meetings. And then the last piece is our event feedback. So we have an event that follows every, or an email that follows every single event that links them to our survey, which is a comprehensive survey that goes through, um, you know, how are we doing? How's our parking? How's um, all of our different services? Uh, and we've had really good response rates to that. Um, typically, you know, we're looking at a couple hundred events a month and, and we get about, 40 to 50 reviews a month. So it's been really awesome. That is um, all of what I had planned. Is there any questions? Well, thank you, Rochelle. That was uh, that was a great run through. I especially appreciated how you uh, went in and showed us some of the configuration on some of those things because um, that's not something people get into all the time. So I think it's good to to see that uh, there. But uh, looks like there has been some questions in the chat, and Dean's been handling, I think, most of those. Um, yeah. uh, Nancy asked a question of about email. Do you use the 
the email inside of Mazevo. So I don't know, Nancy, if you could unmute yourself and ask the question and kind of what you're looking for there, that would be great. Yeah. Hi, Rochelle. Um, so I'm from um, a medical school and I use Mazevo for classroom management, not so much for events. And I struggle with um, people emailing me for um, room bookings and I find I double the work by emailing through Mazevo and through my personal email, just because I don't think they have my email, they, they might get it, but I don't have a confirmation of them understanding that they have the, um, the room. So, so I emailed them secondary through my institution email. Do you guys have a process? Do all your people know to go into Mazevo to email you folks or um, how does that work for you guys? That it's been um, a learning curve. I would say for our group, um, once we've once we've gotten them into Mazevo, we really use the messaging feature or introduce them to the messaging feature as like a very quick and easy way for them to get a hold of us. Um, so I think it it would. Are you having them um, request through Mazebo or are they requesting through your email? So both really oh. at this point. And we don't have the robust education. It sounds like uh, your team was able to put out, but I'm sure people still email <laughs> through. Yeah, we Just, do. We yeah. do. We're, and what we, we, our goal is not necessarily to get a hundred percent always going through web requests. There's always going to be a few that just are going to email us and call us. Um, but I think if you even took a few people who like and encouraged them to get into Mazevo and to utilize the system, I think the one thing that I learned is sometimes they don't care about how annoying it is for you as the per, you know, it's really making sure that you're building the benefits. Like what is the benefit to the person using it, which for us has just been like you have the history, you can get in there for our students, you can get in there and check anytime you want, uh, what room you have. And there are on occasion that we do have to, for some of our large bookings, have to switch rooms because something came up. Um, and so they have access to it, you know, 24 hours a day from their phones, which is sure. really great. Um, so really building the benefits on how it's going to benefit them is really helpful. And sometimes even just having all the information in one location, so they don't have to bounce between their email or search in their email to find that um, selling them on that might help. I do have a secondary question then. Once you approve a request, does the system have a way to auto email the requester? We don't currently have that set up. Um, we can turn that on. We, we find that most people turn that off, oh. but when you hit the approve or deny button, you can have the system send out, hey, your event was approved. Now it doesn't go with the confirmation, because again, they're a requester. We think that they could log into their request portal and see their event, but it you can have it automatically go out. Uh, okay. And then one I quick note on your email, it is possible to configure Mazevo so that when you send that confirmation, if the user gets it and replies to it, it can go back to a departmental email address. It can go to your email address. So you could configure it so you wouldn't have to send out something from from Mazevo and you. from your email so that they have your email. It can it can be on there, so. All right, thank you, Dean. That's yep. a, um, great to know. Thank yep. you. Yep. Okay, we got a bunch of questions here. Um, I'll jump to Amanda. Uh, did we get your questions answered, Amanda, on the SSO? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm just burned out from making web users for the rest of my life because HR Toolkit has never worked for our, our crummy, weird Cisco database thing. And um, I never want to deal with HR Toolkit again if I can help it with our campus. So yeah. anything to help. We do have single sign-on mostly on our campus anyway, but it just, integrating it has been okay. It doesn't apply the um, process templates. And so I'm still having to manually do a lot of work. So that's yeah, why I'm, it, I mean, it I hate should that. automatically come in with a process template. Now we can, it could be configured to be a little smarter and look at some kind of attribute. Are they a student? Are they a faculty member? And then assign a different 
we call them security policies um, mm -hmm. and we can assign those. Now it'll never, you know, if the CIO logs in, we're not going to make them a global administrator or Mazebo. Every user that comes through SSO is always going to be a requester. Okay. Yeah. So CU has. Excuse me. Okay. Um, Eric Johnson um, had a question. How successful are you at getting organizations to give you full required details for their events? Um, refusing services based on deadlines. Eric, if you want to chime in and, and ask that directly, go right ahead. It's definitely been a process for us. That is something that has been probably the most challenging thing. It was something we really had to think through and tackle before COVID. And then COVID hit, which gave us a little bit more time. But what we really do is we've set up everything. So it's just reminding them like pending services. Like these are all the things that we need from you in order for us to execute your event. And so those deadlines, so, so in a sense, like the, the scheduled emails, they're just helping us tell that story. And also explaining that if you don't work with us and, and work with our deadlines, then that's going to be to the detriment of your event. If we can't get people scheduled, if you're coming to us late to plan things, then that's a it's going to ruin your event and, and not necessarily be our fault. We've also, um, if you want to visit our website, we've um, implemented some fees. So if you um, do put in something or ask for something to be um, done past the deadline, there are fees that they now have to pay um, for that um, so that we can kind of, you know, in those situations, we have to scramble to get labor. And unfortunately, from our standpoint, <clears throat> we do have fees uh, for late requests and things as well, but uh, uh, some of the groups, uh, I guess they have enough money, they don't care, and, mm. and they more or less tell us so, uh, we'll, we'll pay the late fee and do it, but uh, some of those groups are also some of the ones that uh, routinely uh, give us things that they need, and, and if it's equipment, if we have enough equipment, that's okay, some, some equipment is limited, uh, if it's personnel, I mean, we're 100% student uh, employees uh, are doing our event setups, our event uh, uh, operations, the uh, technicians. And so we absolutely have to schedule them no later than a week out. And so if they don't tell us uh, those details uh, until it's too late to schedule anybody, well, we more or less have to refuse and just say, we can't give you one. Uh, that can affect their event. Yeah, I totally understand. And, we, and we've had to go to refusing, especially with the labor shortage of, look, we, we, we just can't do it. So I totally feel you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, got a couple that want to see some, some more details. Somebody would like to, Deb Martin would like to see your building hours and how you've got those configured. Yeah. And then we've got a, a Judy Pentecost wants to see you know, could you expl explain your payments and invoicing process if you do that? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so building hours, we handle, um, so all the building hours we have, um, we have it for different buildings. Of course, we have different buildings that use um, Mazebo. Um, and so we have it set from 7 to 10 p.m. Um, that is for our student union um, and all the facilities we manage, alumni and friends, Christ Chapel, our deliver delivery locations. It's also set in place for the Stickle Sky Center as well. Um, and our virtual. we also host virtual events. And then um, there are specific dates in here. Um, so for closed all day for um, different events, like a holiday, um, we also use this sometimes. Uh, if we have a very busy period um, that we know, we will close our building so that no one can access that specifically on the web requested side. Um, 
because you know there's something that's going on that it's just going to take all of our services maybe it's a, a university-wide event homecoming um we have uh, a recruitment event called bronco day that just affects all of campus the other thing that we use is um we use the special dates to note like you'll see in here we have a concert at our extra mile arena it's going to be old dominion that's going to be there we have journey that's coming these things will show up when somebody is requesting. It's kind of a flag to say, hey, campus is going to be very busy that day. Parking is going to be limited. Even see here, spring fling is happening. Parking is going to be limited. Um, we have other notes on here. Our dining team is going to be stretched because of football camps. And then we really try to utilize those to flag people as, as they're booking. Um, because you know we have a very large campus and so not everyone is aware of, of what's happening on those specific dates. Hopefully it also helps them determine on whether they want to host that event on that date. Um, the other thing that we use is room closures. So that's when our, if a room's getting painted for maintenance, pieces like that, we will close that specific room. Um, we will also use it occasionally for when we have football games. We don't want to close the sub, but we want to close Christ Chapel for the, you know, the, the random football games that happen or the different basketball games. So we'll use this feature as well. Are there any questions surrounding that? Uh, I can't see the chat, so. Deb, did that answer your questions on that? Yeah, yes, Rochelle, that was great. Um, thank you very much. It gave me exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. Awesome. Um, for invoicing, uh, we go ahead and our process is that the um, Thursday following the event, um, our team runs a report, I'm sorry, the Tuesday following the event, our team runs a report for the last week. The um, Our coordination team review that report um, and go in and make any changes that need to be made. Um, so if they know, and, and typically this is also when we're getting information back from the review, uh, the customer service feedback, or just our coordinators circling back or intake team circling back and checking in. So we're making all the, the changes that are necessary. And then um, our billing team sends out a preview invoice. Um, and all of that is uh, through the create invoices here. Um, and the uh, they review the invoices, another opportunity for feedback, but this time for the client. And then um, our team then invoices out through Mazevo. We do not in, we do not put any like payments don't come through the the full payment in the end. We just handle deposits through Mazevo. Um, our finance department handles the full payment or um, through an external like our AR handles and accepts the payments that way. So it's something that our coordinators and our team doesn't necessarily do. Um, we will follow up on anything that um, is hanging out there, payments that are late, um, our finance team lets us know, but that is the process that we do. Is there any questions around that? Um, the next question back to Eric Johnson, do you have any utilization tracking um, events per room per day, facility maintenance versus event holds. So that's all in event analytics. Yeah. Did you want me to show how you Eric, can look at that? Eric, do you want to see that? How that? Um, yeah, I was just wondering because uh, it didn't look like it showed up in, you know, you have your days that the the facilities are closed. We don't do, <laughs> you have your, uh, I guess your dates uh, set up in a, in a different sort of calendar. Ours, you pretty much have to check uh, room by room on availability, but we do uh, put holds like yesterday, yesterday was an activities uh, fair day, uh, which is the entire campus organizations all, all doing, uh, showing up for booth space and stuff like that. Uh, and so we close off all the rooms, but we do them room by room by room. 
Um, and so we don't necessarily have a calendar set up to show full dates where we just close off uh, event use. Okay, so, so that's a little different than what you put in there. You were talking about like room utilization. So you're right. trying to figure out. And, and of course we track, we still track. I mean, that's, that's an event hold versus a maintenance hold. Maintenance okay. hold, we don't get have that counted against us as far as uh, utilization of space. Yeah, so you could um, you could use statuses to do an event hold mm -hmm. versus a maintenance hold, and then when you run analytics or any report, you could use the status filter to select out well what do you want to include or exclude from any of the analytics. But analytics in general is kind of this statistical engine where you can go in and say well how many events did I have in each room, you know of that certain status right, mm -hmm. so you could. You know, you could count that by room, by building, by organization. There's a variety of different options to have the system go and accumulate that data for you for whatever filter set you want, right? So you could say, I want to see utilization by student groups in these three buildings, you know, so you, you have the option to kind of filter and, and layer that in there, so... Okay. Um, let's see. Let me see here, Lindy. Um, Lindy uh, has got a question from UT Martin on how to configure the reply to address. So um, let me. Um, so Rochelle, if you could pull up your settings again, and yeah. then go into your confirmation templates. Okay. And then we can just pick pick any one of your templates. Uh, so to set this reply to address that I was referring to, it's this email right here in the, the second field down on the left-hand side. That is the reply to email address um, that if, if you send a confirmation out and they hit reply to, that's the address that it will go to. It'll come into that user's mailbox as notifications at my Mazevo, but when they hit reply, it's going to go to student union events. Okay. So... And then you have the option there that BCC, every time you send a confirmation out from this template, it'll automatically send it to that same email address so you have a copy of it there. So does that make sense? Good. Okay. All right. I think we got through all the questions, but if I didn't, Unmute yourself and chime in, and we'll yeah. see if we can get them answered. So, um, Rochelle, I did have one question for you. When you were uh, going through there, you mentioned that originally you were allowing people to make requests for equipment, and then you kind of backed off of that and decided um, there was a little bit of a learning curve there. Can you kind of go into what, um, how you decided to do that, and what what people were getting hung up on? Yeah, I think um, we just, one, we'd have the over exuberant uh, event planner who would add a bunch of equipment and mm -hmm. there was a lot of configuring that we figured we needed to do in the back to make sure that the equipment for the room was the proper equipment. So um, I like, I'm trying to, the equipment so it, for example in our jordan ballroom yeah. we can do stages in there so there's you we've made it so that stages are available for the jordan ballroom but for our smaller um, rooms that have lower ceilings i went in and adjusted it so stages can't be in there but we'd have a lot of people who are like wait a minute why can't i add a state you know and so instead of having like the coaching of an event coordinator to guide them through some of those things we just kept running into problems like that 
And then we had groups that was the very shy and timid event planner who was very concerned and stressed out now that we've put that in their hands. And so between those two, we just kind of learned that we needed to do a little bit more coaching. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of the same way with our event um, terminology, major event standard. That is something that we put into our requesters' hands to choose. So we really had to do some outreach to campus for them to understand that. We also have some help text next to it, it says over 200 people, under 200 people. Um, mm -hmm. But we really had to think through some of those things on where we need to uh, make sure that campus was brought up to speed on, on some of those things to just make the process smoother. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of consistent with what we see, which is where, you know, a lot of times the people making requests for their events, they're not event planners themselves. So, you know, you you put all this stuff in front of them and then they're like, oh, sure, yeah, I'll take this and that and everything. And they don't really think through it in the way that an event planner does with stuff. So, um, yeah, that that's, we've definitely seen that before, so. Let's see. We've got Amanda asked a question. Are there any packages that we can uh, make available online for each room? So Amanda, I, I'm guessing you're saying like an AV package, a standard, you know, a, a, a standard AV package is a, a cart, a projector and a couple of cables. Is that what you mean when you say package? Yeah, like it's what you see is what you get with this room rather than having them able to pick and choose. They have one choice. It's this package comes with this room. Amen. You can't choose anything else. Stop asking me every five minutes for a stage. Yeah, <laughs> we did that with AV. We, okay, we, cool. <laughs> we created packages for AV for that specific reason. And also it helps as for our coordinators who don't have to think through like, okay, what are we doing for this room again? Like Save what's going time. on? So yeah, we've built that. Um, where it just was challenging was the equipment piece. Okay, cool beans, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and Katie, you had a question if you wanna unmute and uh, ask that, Katie Martin. Sure. Hi, Rochelle. I'm Katie from the University of Iowa. Um, I saw your question, your event question for student orgs about asking if they're uh, event was registered on Engage yet. Um, do you have a specific order that they have to do that in? Um, what is that process like for you? Yeah, so we are, um, we are, students have to register their event in Engage prior to getting space. Um, we run into issues with this and we're working really hard right now. We're actually, our university's out um, looking at different products other than Engage right now, um, but we want to take Mazevo and meld those two because our students get really confused on Engage and Mazevo. They don't know who's who. Also, they don't know who our, that our offices are different. But at this current moment, they go through Engage. They put in the event request. They put where they want their um, event because there are other locations on campus in which they can be. And then they submit that and then the um, student involvement team who oversees the clubs and our organizations and fraternities, they then um, connect uh, the student with whomever they need to book that space. So um, if it's us, they're looping in, um, we have a couple of coordinators that work on it or our intake team to book those spaces um, and make sure that we, they both have the registration in. There are some times where they put it into our office and they say no to that question, but we still keep it requested on the books and hold it and guide them through that process and, and use it more as a coaching moment and don't punish them for that. That makes sense. Yeah, thank you very much. Our um, departments are organized very similar to yours, it sounds like, with having the leadership and engagement team oversee Engage, but our timeline is different. So we require them to have space held before registering it on Engage so that we can or so that we can um, confirm, so we can ensure, that's right, or ensure that there will yeah, be space yeah. held for them. Um, so, but that's something that we've gone back and forth with as well, you know, students are having to answer a lot of questions multiple times and you know they're used in different ways. So we just wanna make sure that we have all the information that we need from them. Um, so ongoing, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I see we're about at our time. Any last questions here before we, we wrap things up? Let's 
seeing any other questions roll in here. So, um, well, I want to just give a big round of applause for Rochelle. Thank you. I know you, everybody's Rochelle. muted, so you can't hear that, thank but <laughs> we are clapping for you. Um, thank you so much for uh, sharing this with everybody. I think it was very, very informative. You all have a very busy operation there, high demand environment, and it's great to see kind of some of the things that you're doing to kind of manage that de demand. And so um, I think it was very helpful um, and uh, great presentation. So thank you for doing mm -hmm. this. Um, we will be doing another Mazevo Connect next month. Uh, we don't have the topic yet decided, but uh, in the next couple of days we will. So stay tuned for that. I will uh, put notice out through the usual channels once uh, once we've got that scheduled and everything, but it'll be towards the end of February. Typically it's the last Thursday of the month uh, there coming up in February. So um, with that said, also, if you ever have an idea for something that you want us to talk about, Mazevo Connect, whether it's from a customer or from us here at Mazevo, please let us know. Uh, we're always looking for ideas. And if you if you just have a topic that's burning in, in your mind or you want to present yourself, we'd love to talk to you. So anyways, thanks again. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll be sending out the recording to this as well here in a few days. So um, we'll be in touch. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank Take care. Okay. Thank you.